Okay, we had the new parts come through from the factory. We'll get them on the car ahead of FP1. What's going on guys, Luke22SV here, back with the fourth round of the Mixed Schumacher career mode here for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix in Baku. As you can see, we've got some aerodynamics upgrades already to the car in the fourth round, and to the chassis and engine upgrades we got in Bahrain, uh, China rather I should say. But, as you can see, we've now got the eighth best car, of, so we've overtaken Toro Rosso. Oh, McLaren also upgrading a little bit, along with Force India and Ferrari getting themselves back ahead of Mercedes. Williams adding to some upgrades as well, but here we are in practice. For a little incident happened in FP2, getting it on the kerb and then into the wall, and that's a disastrous start to our weekend, and that's ourselves ending that session there with a broken front wing as we head into qualifying. Welcome to qualifying in the Republic of Azerbaijan. The teams are making their last minute adjustments before the lights go green, and the fight for pole position can get underway. So here we are heading into our main qualifying lap, heading into turn one, getting it nice and clean on the exit and entrance as well, coming up to turn two, an easy sector this is pretty much, just straightforward three left hand turns as we come up into the next straight, DRS wide open, hoping to get our max speed up, got some aerodynamic upgrades at this track which should help us significantly, got a major upgrade coming into this race, we'll get through turn three, nice and clean, still not quite as fast as we'd like this car as it's seat understeering almost hitting in the wall again not very confident around this track after the incidents that's happened in practice but on the back foot coming into qualifying again a lot of understeer in these sections so even despite these major upgrades we're still struggling massively we're coming into the castle section the tightest section on the calendar a very tight round this track as well we come up to this section getting it right nice and clean through there not hitting the wall come on the exit on the curves again they're causing us a lot of problems around here but here we are up to the point where we're coming into the incident we had in practice on the curb again but this time it doesn't send us into the wall and here we are heading towards the end of the lap now getting it over the curb nice and tidy not causing us any problems this time come towards the end of the lap it's pretty much just a straight this yeah last sector heading into this section now as uh, Raikkonen is fast as then Verstappen beats that time so Verstappen looking well around this track, coming onto the back straight. This is going to be our best lap time. What? How is it going to be for us? DRS open. What is it going to be? The time is going to be good enough for this time at P4 ahead of Lance Stroll, but behind our teammate. But this is our best lap. We could not improve from this, so we decided to end the session with Hamilton on pole, Raikkonen second, Sebastian Vettel third. And Bottas getting a five place grid penalty for some reason and Charles Leclerc our teammate up in 11th so we're down in 18th only ahead of Sergei Sorokin and Stoffel van Dorn so it can only get better in the race and let's find out what happens Good afternoon and welcome to Baku. This was the arena, if you think back to 2017, of one of the most eventful races of modern history, with controversy behind the safety car, last second overtakes, and a historic podium for Williams and for Lance Stroll. So let's find out what lies in store for us this year. It's time for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Baku city circuit then, an unpredictable 3.7 mile track around the streets of the Azerbaijan capital. 20 turns for our drivers to navigate today, including the infamous Turn 8, one of the tightest and most challenging corners of the season. Anthony Davidson joins me again for the race today. Let's talk about the Rainmaster. As with all the drivers at this level, they have a lot of ambition. But Formula One's a daunting step up from any other series, so expectations are high right from the start. And this is something that has ended the career of many a young driver, as that leap up to Formula One proves to be too much. But luckily in this case, I'd say they're doing a good solid job and the risk the team took in signing them is definitely starting to pay off. We're almost ready to go then. And this is Here we are for the grid in the Azerbaijan like Grand Prix. Lewis Hamilton, Lewis Hamilton on pole position. with Kimi Raikkonen alongside him in P2. The then the rest of the order, we got Pe Vettel in P3, Perez all the way up there in P4. Daniel Ricciardo 5th, Max Verstappen 6th, Ocon 7th, Force India looking good round here, Bottas starting 8th with his penalty, Sainz 9th, Leclerc 10th, then Grosjean, Hülkenberg, 
Alonso up in 13th, Stroll 14th, good for Williams, Gasly and Hartley on row 8. Then row 9, we've got ourselves in P17 with Kevin Magnussen, someone we've had plenty of battles with already this season in P19. Is there going to be a, things, a sign of things to come in this race? We'll find out as we head onto the grid with one light, two light, three lights, four lights, five lights. And it's lights out and away we go in Baku. We get off the line pretty well. So does Sorokin as he looks to make a move onto us into turn one. We get past Brendan Hartley, but Sergei Sorokin diving past several cars, almost having an incident with his teammate. He doesn't end up spinning, but only a little half spin. As we look to make a move on Sergei Sorokin and Pierre Gasly into turn two, but end up not making it past either of them, leaving us on the back foot on the straight with Hartley just behind us. So looking like a poor start for us then with Brendan Hartley looking to make a move. But because we're in a Ferrari engine, he's only got the Honda engine. We managed to keep hold of P17. So not a bad start for ourselves. We've gained a place on Hartley, but lost a place with Sorokin. So we look to make a move now on Pierre Gasly into the next corner, turn four. He gets a better exit though. And Hartley looks to punish us into turn five. But we get the better line into turn six, leaving us staying in P17. So a move that almost worked on Gasly didn't work left us on the back foot with Hartley just trying to get pa past us as well as we go through the castle section all nice and tidy into turn, lap one but Gasly just ahead of us so a clean lap one then P17 looks like an exciting race ahead of us we've got two Williams ahead of us so we can make up these places we've got a good car around here as my teammates told us in qualifying with him qualifying 11th so potential for points today for both of us if I can get up the get up the order but down in p17 at the moment ghastly ahead of us looking to make a move now because he's got the Honda engine we got the ferrari engine we're coming onto the back straight with uh, a hell of a chance of getting past him here but he's going to have a toe with the williams in front of him and the williams themselves are looking to get past alonso alonso he's got a slightly better car than the williams but the williams they got a better engine so they're going to be looking to make a move on alonso into turn one as you can see there, ahead of you, Gasly is uh, closing in on Gasly, but as you can see, Srotkin getting past Alonso, and now Stroll's going to be just behind him as well. And Gasly is just ahead of us. So there's a nice little battle on the first lap between everyone. Uh, Srotkin does get past Alonso, Stroll's looking to make a move as well. We're not, we're not under threat from Brendan Hartley, we're just looking forward at this stage. Here, Gasly ahead of us. As you can see, Lance Stroll making a move now on Alonso. And he looks to make it stick as well, as we're looking to make a move on Gasly at some point. But too far back at this stage. With Sorokin holding everyone up at this point. And as you can see here, the engine is a little, little worn, so that's going to slow us down a little bit on the straights. But here we are, behind Pierre Gasly, on lap two, heading towards the castle section again. We're quite close to Pierre Gasly at this stage. And he breaks a bit early. We look to make a move down the inside. A tight move, a little aggressive. Uh, we make it stick. No... No reason to uh, let it back past. It was a legal move. We're back up into P16. Getting out of shape there on the exit of the uh, castle section, but here we are chasing Alonso, who caused us several problems in China. And if you haven't seen that episode already, then go and check it out. But here we are behind Fernando Alonso, behind both the Williamses. So we can still get past these guys. We should be able to get past these guys. We're currently P16, so we've made up a place of our original starting order. We're coming on to the end of lap two. We've got Alonso in front of us. We've got Stroll in front of him. Sorokin in front of him. Alonso, again, the same thing as last lap. We've got the uh, better engine than Alonso, but he's going to have a tow from the, both the Williamses. As Hamilton continues to lead and put in fastest laps in the Mercedes. So Mercedes still looking strong despite Ferrari getting more upgrades for this race. As you can see, we're closing in on Alonso. DRS is now enabled, so that will help us. Both the Williamses are now fighting for position. Stroll getting ahead of Sorok in there. We're behind Fernando Alonso heading in towards turn two. As you can see, a perfect opportunity, but they get a better exit. We've got DRS wide open now. So there's a good chance of making a move on Fernando Alonso, but he's going to have DRS on the Williams as well, potentially, as both the Williams go in for a fight again. We even look to make a move on Alonso. We almost hit the wall on the inside there, but we've made a move. Alonso still trying to hang on to that P14. But we hang it around the outside at P15 rather. We're up into P15 on lap three. So we've made two positions up off our original starting place with two Williams in front of us. This is potential for at least P13 at this stage because we should be able to get past these Williams as we head on to the end of lap three. Our engineer is coming onto the radio saying to change the strategy and we agreed to uh, make, change the strategy, looking to make an undercut on everyone. So 
So we come into the pits, P15, and that is a yellow flag for a retiring car, and that is Stoffel van Dorn. So terrible start to the season for Stoffel van Dorn and McLaren. McLaren simply having no luck. The two retirements for Stoffel van Dorn in the opening four races now, and a huge problem in China with a puncture, which caused him to fall back. As we leave the pits, looking to make this undercut stick, it would have been nice if there was a virtual safety car or a safety car from Stoffel Van Dorn's retirement, but it wasn't to be. And we had to make down, make do with the undercut attempt. As we come up to lap five now, as we've made the undercut. On Lance Stroll now, he's just ahead of us. We're up into P15 already, ahead of Nico Hülkenberg and behind Sergio Perez, who remember started P4 and we started P17. So the fact that we're just behind him proves that this has worked rather well maybe Perez has had a bad start for this race who knows but we are from P14 at this stage and there's still cars left the pit so we're looking pretty good at this point looking pretty good coming out of sector one head of Lance Stroll which is what we wanted to be we want to be ahead of the Williams cars because we just, we are faster than them but Hulkenberg behind Lance Stroll so don't know what's happened to Renault this race there must have been some sort of ordeal in the pit lane which has led to us getting ahead of all these guys this, that's also another reason why I pitted early, is to avoid any traffic in the pit lane. Have, a, have the pit lane to myself and be able to leave and enter without any cars coming down and getting in the way. But on lap 5, we're up into P14. And it's looking pretty good at this stage with ourselves making up places from the start. And there's a good potential for points here with our teammate starting in 11th. So there's a potential for points. We're only sit, the only points we've scored so far are, is the, my point in Bahrain. So we're currently sitting in 8th in the standings, only ahead of McLaren and Williams at this stage. So it's a good chance for points in Baku, if we can. But Lance Stroll is still keeping with us at this point. And he's, he might have DRS, but it doesn't look like he's going to be able to be a threat down on the main straight. But here we are, loads of cars in the pit still. We're now up into P11, P10. We're ahead of Esteban Ocon, but we're behind Max Verstappen. But behind the Red Bull at this stage in the race is crazy. And as you can see, Verstappen, Perez and our teammate Charles Leclerc is in front of us. So we're quite close to our teammate at this stage. But at this point, we end up coming out of the pits. And Verstappen, we can potentially ch challenge our teammate because we got the same car. But my teammate has a little bit more confidence around this track than me at this stage. Because of my instance in qualifying and the practice. So here we are on lap 6. P10, so points for both salvers at this point. So it's looking pretty good, looking pretty rosy. But as we come on to lap seven, it's just the same sort of thing that's going on. We're not being able to make any impression on the cars in front as much as we'd like to. Leclerc and Perez swapping positions all the time. We've got Nico Hülkenberg behind us now, who can be a threat because he's in a faster Renault than us. And he'll be looking to get back into the points. As we come up behind Max Verstappen, nothing seems to be happening. We just can't, we're in a bit of a gridlock here. We're stuck in P10, not being able to move forward, but again, Holkenberg not making much of an impression on us on lap 7. But he is, he is closing in slightly, but he's not in, causing us too many problems yet. As on lap 7, it's looking pretty good at this point. We're in both salvers in the points, so this is good for us. As uh, our engineer advises us to move on to mix 2. As we're trying desperately to catch up to Max Verstappen and Charles Leclerc and Sergio Perez. But not happening at this stage as much as we would like it to. But coming on to lap 10, this is where it, disaster happens. We turn into the corner, the back end gets out on us and we hit the wall, losing a bit of our front wing, a huge chunk of our front wing. And that is going to cost us dearly with just a couple laps left to go. Hülkenberg behind us now, really behind us. He is looking to make a move. He's wary that we've lost a bit of our front wing. We're going to have to take it so easy, we're going to have to break so much earlier, we're going to have to be so much slower, and Hülkenberg looking to make the move now into P10. We're trying desperately to keep hold of P10, because we really want that point. Now, without a front wing, we're in deep trouble, as Hülkenberg still looking to make the move on us, as we're coming up to the castle section as well now, with Hülkenberg desperately trying to get back into the points. Here we are, riding on board with ourselves on lap 11, just three laps left. Can we keep in the points with just three laps to go? It's only time will tell. We come through the stadium castle section. Oh no, we just hit the wall and we're out of the race. Are you okay? That is a disaster for us. Hitting the wall, losing our wheel and we're out of the race.
in Azerbaijan, a disaster from what looked so promising not so long ago. But it's all unraveled on that lap, and that is us out of the race, out of Baku, and disaster for us. We're now under a lot of pressure after that, out of the race, and yeah, that is just not good for us. It was looking so well, we are in the points, but that is the end of the race for us. Mercedes, however, winning through so Lewis Hamilton. Toto Wolff, very happy on the other hand, compared to us at Salba. Anthony, Hamilton getting out of his car, he's looking very happy with that. Good win for him. Good win for him in the championship. Raikkonen in there, behind him as well. So Mercedes, we're winning the race. Ourselves at Salba, we could have been so much more, could have had a double points finish, but in the end, we couldn't. And Carlos Sainz is very happy with his sixth place as well. And here and come out onto the podium. Today, it's Hamilton that race. wins from Vettel and Raikkonen. And that is the end of that race. So coming on to the podium. And now let's, take let's have a look. Charles stand. Leclerc finished Lewis eighth Hamilton in the end. So that's four the the vital points for Salva. He moves ahead of us in the standings as well. You, Ocon finished in tenth in the end. Holkenberg has some problems in the end thanks to us getting in the way. So that's very disappointing for us. A disaster Hamilton that happened. And Hamilton leading the, ch the championship from Raikkonen, Vettel. We're up to 7th ahead of Toro Rosso. So we're up on 5 points now thanks to Leclerc's 8th place. But it could have been an extra point had we scored. So we're looking quite good. We're looking like we're going to be heading the battle for 7th. But that is going to be the end of the episode there. If you would like that, then leave a like and subscribe. And we'll see you soon for round 5 in Spain.